Hi, Dr. Sunny here. So I wanted to make another video announcement for you and not just a screen walkthrough, but something where we could actually be face to face in some ways. I know a lot of you are getting used to that. Um, in our early modules, you sure making videos to submit things for class. And I know a lot of professors don't really use that function a lot. So it might be something that's new or weird to you. Um, and I wanted you to know that even though I've taught public speaking for over a decade, I'm suffering through it too. And just like you, it's not my favorite thing to do. So um, the important thing is that you are submitting though. And I wanted to talk to you about a couple of things. Um, I asked Judith to join me here because if we're going to talk about things you don't like, it's always better to have a cute furry dog. Makes it easier to hear. So first thing, you may have looked at your grade at some point this week and you may be like, oh, this is terrible. I'm dropping this class. I want you to look again because as promised, I moved those course overview assignments into the other category of grades, which means as promised, they are no longer counting in your grade. These are really meant just to be practice assignments so you can get the hang of things um, and you can figure out how grades work, how you can see my comments, and what you need to do to get your work up to the level where you want it to be to earn the grade you want in the class. So if you go through each of those, you'll see that I've marked the rubric, I've given you a grade, often I'll give you comments and say things such as, you're not meeting the word count, which again is a spoiler on my next and second and final point. But I might also tell you a response to something personal or um, something to do with our class. So you're gonna wanna make sure you know how to read those. I recommend that you go into your account in that black left global menu bar in Canvas and you set up notifications, whether by text or email. So when I make a comment like that, you see it. And that way you see it right away. You can correct anything that needs to be fixed. Now, normally you would have the seven day late work grace period after that was due um, to make any necessary changes, edits, fix things, submit late. That doesn't make a lot of sense for the course overview module because it is ungraded. But you will need to submit to everything in the course overview module before you'll be able to begin work in the principles module. And this will always be the case. So you wanna make sure that you stay on top of that work so you can keep moving forward. Now, the part why we brought the cute dog. So we have minimum word counts. Minimum word counts that I've designed, actually, I have minimum word counts that you have to honor in our class. And I am always really clear about what these are. I put them right in the assignment direction so that you can see them. There was some confusion in the course overview module for the video analysis, is it 500 words total or 500 words per reply? It is per reply. So three threads, each one has a discussion question. You will reply to each one with a 500 word reply. And then you will reply to a classmate's reply in that with a 250 word reply. So that is 2,250 words for each video analysis. Oh my God, that's more words than I've ever written in my whole life. Just kidding. That is actually about five double spaced pages. And when I am designing a course, I like to think about how much time you're spending in the course compared to how much credit you're earning. So our class is a three hour college class, which means that for every hour you spend in class to earn an A, you should be spending three hours outside of the class preparing. That's just a generic formula that's used um, in most college courses and as recommendations to students. So that means to earn an A, you could be spending up to 12 hours on our class week. Now, I'm a mom. I worked while I was in college and graduate school. I understand that that's not very realistic because if you think about your full-time work, and you think about your full-time school, and you think about your full-time family, maybe you've got a few little furry friends too, take up your time. That's There's not even that many hours in your day. So I do not expect that it's gonna take you 12 hours to complete work in our class. Um, I actually expect that it might take you six hours a week to complete work in our course. Um, but I definitely expect it's gonna take you at least three hours. And that is because in a traditional classroom, you would be inside the classroom for three hours. Um, 
And that wouldn't be counting anything you did to prepare homework, to do reading, to take notes, um, to go over notes that you had taken. So it's very intentional that we have these word counts for the different assignments because it's meant to ensure that you're spending enough time on this class that it's a legitimate class and not one of those for-profit fly-by-night universities that just gives anybody credit if they pay for the class. So it's a quality control. But how will this work? Well, in the course overview, if you didn't meet the word count, I gave you a rubric score that would show you what that would look like as a graded assignment. Remember, none of those assignments count as graded in the course overview, even though you will see a grade for them. I've also made a note there to you in some cases on what your minimum word count was. So if it asked for 500 words and you wrote 156, I said you wrote 156. You need to meet 500 words. So in the future, I want you to count your own words. And if ideal practice, you would type after your paragraph the number of words it is. So 501 words. And this will keep me from copying your um, paragraph into my Google Docs, pasting it, highlighting it, doing a word count, and seeing it's only 325 words. Because you can imagine, that gets old after doing that like 75 times, and I'm human, and it's frustrating. So if yours is close, go ahead and put the word count, 501. If it's long and obvious, that's fine. I'll see that. Um, but certainly make sure you do that. In the video analysis, the it's 100 points and 50 of that is mechanics, like did you do it right and meet word counts. So if you don't meet a word count for one of the replies, you're not going to receive credit for it. And the way I do this is if it's a reply to the question and you didn't submit it or you didn't meet word count, then it'll be minus 15 points out of 50. So if you didn't meet word count for all three, you're already down 45 points. If you don't meet the minimum word count for the classmate replies, that's minus five points for each one or each one you don't submit. Now, obviously, I'm not going to give you negative points if you go beyond 50. You would just get a zero. Um, but it's really important you meet those word counts. And how I envision this is as you're watching the video every week, you might be taking notes, notes that you would turn into this. And much like with the book club and the principles this week, what I'm looking for is not just that you're describing what's happening in the video to me, but that you're actually going beyond that and you're analyzing it and you're applying concepts that we're learning to it. And you're giving us some insight beyond just restating what happened. So again, I know that can be frustrating. It can be a little bit different from online classes that you might have taken where things were just um, judged on submission and you didn't really have to meet that criteria. But it's important to do that to really get your brain going um, and get your creative juices flowing and get you engaged in this topic and the material. So what I want you to do last thing is go into the principles module and make sure that you can access everything in that module so that if you have a problem, you can submit a report and I'll see that on Monday when I come back from the weekend. I also want you to notice on the homepage, I changed a few things and um, it now says if you're having problems and there's a little table where it has links, which I hope will make it easier to see and remember different ways to contact me in case you're having different problems. If you are having problems, I look forward to hearing from you. Um, if not, I think you're really going to like the principles um, module. I put that Grey's Anatomy B Team spinoff in there for the video analysis, and I think that's working really well. And I'm looking forward to learning more about you in the introspection. So send in that work. Next week, we'll be moving on and looking at culture and gender. Now I'm going to.